Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. And on today's vlog, we're going to be brewing some beer and at the very same time, canning some beer. So today's brew is Harrison's Pale, which I wasn't gonna do for the rest of the year, but I need some cans for Christmas. So we're brewing it simply to package into can. And you'll see here, we have the can machine, the can filling machine, which we made out and ready to go. So what I normally do before we use the can machine is, oh, most of this stuff is, is taken apart. So the filters are off and they've been washed from the previous use and whatever, and the whole system drained down. Before we use it, I fill these three corny kegs, one, two, three. One's got caustic, one's got water, and one's got PAA, or paracetic acid, in there. So we'll flush the whole system down. So we'll flush the whole system down with caustic, rinse all the pipe work and everything else, and then we'll give it a rinse with the rinse water in the other keg. And then finally, the rinse water, of course, is to push all the caustic out of the system. And then finally, we'll run through eight or ten cans worth, well no, it's in threes, so we'll say nine or twelve cans worth of Persid or PAA to push through and sanitise everything. Then we'll tip the sanitizer over the fill rods and that kind of thing. And then I normally leave it with the fill rods in the down position, just sat in the sanitizer until we need it. And then I'll just simply pop off these connectors. We'll change this over for a Sankey connector shortly. And then that Sankey connector will connect onto one of these 100 litre kegs. So we take the beer directly out of the fermenter. We're doing porter today. And we'll mix in any priming sugar into the tank with any flavourings such as the uh, for the plump water we put some uh, natural plum extract in there and then we'll fill the keg from the bottom up and that will mix the priming sugar and the flavourings within the beer and then we'll connect it up and send it through onto the canning line fill the cans seam the cans on our Innovus engineering can seamer and then we'll box them and stack them out of the way uh, to carbonate I'll just check how we're getting on here that oh, looks a little fast we'll slow that down a touch so that's what we're going to do today folks so we'll see if we can catch a little bit of canning footage and uh, yeah here are the empties which we have to go at ah there's my connector so I also with the lids these are the lids we'll get a couple of containers and uh, we'll just put them on the front here one of them with the lids in and the other one to rinse the cans and we don't use PAA in that because obviously PAA degrades into uh, oxygen and acetic acid so what we do instead is use a little bit of star sand and uh, that just sanitizes the can lids um, and then we just place the lids on as the cans fill. They are covered in a CO2 blanket as these retract. You'll just see these little white pipes, they're CO2 pipes. And as they lift up, they give a, a six to eight second uh, flow of CO2, which is more than enough time for us to put the lids on. And then when the lids are on, they're 99% sealed anyway. They just need crimping and sorting on the seamer. It really is quite a simple process when it gets going and we can really blast through the cans and we'll probably do a uh, hundred litre keg oh well we, we normally get going about eight cans per minute so you do the math I can't think what it is at the moment but we can empty two tanks in a day if we really go for it anyway talking ain't gonna get us anywhere I need to get the process going it's all ready 11.47 and if I carry on waffling it'll be 11.48 
So Gemma's kindly volunteered to demonstrate the process because I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time. So here we have the cans filling up. You've seen this all before unless you're new to the channel. And then you'll see that quickly she slips the lids on. Oh, there we go. No pressure. And then the next lot moves along. Fill rods down, CO2 purge first, and then the beer. And then you'll see if I pan back, the blue light will come on when the rods retract, because that's CO2 purging all the time now while the lids go on. The lids are on, CO2 stops. And then move along, there we go. That's six cans filled in 54 seconds. We're coming up to nine. Compressor, perfect timing. Now we've got this little box on, this was an afterthought. This is just to prevent that CO2 blanket from being blown away. I come and do some seaming now, Jem, otherwise we're gonna drop off the end. So, in the future, I want to make this automatically run onto the seamer and then put some sensors in line so that we have a pneumatic rod that lifts the base plate and pushes the starting button, so to speak. Let's see the seaming process. It'd be nice to do a slow motion on this. Let me just change the camera, Gem, mm -hmm. onto uh, Alright, 60 frames per second, and we might be able to slow this down a little bit. Right, we're at 60 frames per second, let's do some slow motion. I'm sure you get the idea and Gem's just pulling the arm up and then from there they come across just into a rinse bucket and then it's just a case of pulling them out letting them drain on the uh, table I'll just switch back to 1080 uh, 30 frames per second I mean there we go so we can zoom in and zoom out on this mode so we can get a little bit more in but that's basically it and then from here when the cans are rinsed off they go into a box and then into the warm room to carbonate and then when we take them out of the warm room we'll run them through the labeler put the labels on and then they're ready for sale and what I would like to do is also have a conveyor belt coming off this side with a couple of blowers and a rinser so we can rinse and dry and then whoever's doing the boxing can just put the labels on here and now without us having to open the boxes back up again. But one good thing that does come of opening the boxes to relabel is after the conditioning phase, if there are any dud seams which we do occasionally get like one in a hundred or something like that, maybe not even that many. Um, they tend to show themselves after they've conditioned, so that would prevent us from sending any cans out, which are potentially popped. So there we go. Canning day. And brewing day. So where are we with the brew? The boil kettle's at 91 degrees. We're still sparging a little bit. 
we're an hour into the sparge now. You may remember, I think I said it was a 11.47 on the last clip. It's now 12.59 and we're nearly at the top. So we're about ready for an addition of anti-foam. The heaters are on. We warm this up while we're filling up. So we'll drop some anti-foam in there. We'll recirculate a little bit to get a more uniform profile of the sugars in the boil kettle. And when we hit a boil, we'll drop this down to around 40% and we'll start the hop additions. That's the wrong way around, I believe. Uh, the Whirlpool edition. Yeah, as uh, da, da, da. early, late. Yeah, they're in the wrong one. Put them in there. These are the Protoflop tablets, they go in with the 10 minute edition. There we go, so I like to stack my hops. That one first, that one underneath for 10 minutes, and then this is the Whirlpool edition at 80. It's that simple. Oh, we missed it. It's Gemma's deep gas in the 100 litre keg, so we can refill it now this time with porter. We've, uh, oh look at all them cans, that looks cool, doesn't it? We've managed to fill up uh, approximately 20 boxes, which is about 400 cans of stout. That should do us for Christmas. Don't want to fill too much up. And then we're going to have a go at uh, 400 cans of porter and then 400 cans of plum porter. So just quite easy to switch over particularly if you're going from one dark beer to the next and just basically push the stout out with the porter it's as simple as that and uh, then we'll do the plum porter at the end because obviously the plum porter has got the flavouring in it and that would essentially taint all the lines that's just been pushed back, look it's going to fall in drain there we go so you can see here star sand in these containers just to sanitize the lids and what have you. I don't know if I mentioned that before. I might have done. There we go. That's better. Might want to put these locks on the feet just to stop the whole thing taking itself for a walk. And that sound in the microwave is the sound of the sugar ready to go into that keg. Well, well, we had a bit of fun then. So, uh, quite a few things happened all at once. Um, we are just about to start canning a new batch, the porter, and then I realised we've got to get this mash tun out and get the grain outside for the farmer to collect, because he's coming today, I didn't want to miss him. It's nearly three o'clock. Then the alarm went off for the end of the boil, um, but I'd forgotten to close this bottom valve. So as I'm recirculating the hot work through the plate chiller to sanitise it, it dragged all the hops in through the bottom and blocked up, blocked up the, uh, the hop filter. So I closed this valve here and I closed that valve there, thinking I'd isolated the uh, hop filter, but no I hadn't. I'd forgotten to close this inlet pipe here. So I took this tri-clamp fitting off and pulled this forwards and the work came straight out of here, 100 degrees. So there's one hand, there's the other. So I've got some Burns gel on it at the moment, but it is stinging like mad. You can really see the colour difference between the two, you know quite pink and this one like I say red raw and it feels like it's gonna do something anyway I quickly I knew straight away what I'd done as soon as the work started coming out of the sides so my other hand was free I flicked that off quickly and then ran straight over to the cold tap and ran it under the water so hopefully we don't suffer too badly it starts at about where the end of that tattoo's been removed there and runs to about the knuckle on this finger. 
and that section there is the most painful uh, yeah we'll see I'm hoping oh look at that it's starting to swell up a little bit I'm hoping it's not too bad so anyway we managed to get it all cleaned up uh, still a little bit of grain to be swept away uh, false bottom's got to go back into the tank and then we can start with the porter hopefully why is that uh, on that must have gone automatically you know sometimes it's, if there's a an ambient spike in the electric supply or let's say a pump turns on or something like that it can trigger the canning line to go automatically it's a good job that the handle wasn't depressed and it's not connected otherwise all that beer would have ended up on the floor that would have been a real like three or four bad things happening at once but there we go this is really stinging now Gem really stinging so anyway let's wind up that's quite a box of beers that we've done today porter stout and plum porter we've washed all of the kit down I've left the can filler with caustic in it I'll clean that down tomorrow let it have a good soak tonight this just wants drying off and then I've turned the pump on to wash the boil kettle we had it off while we were here finishing off canning just so we could hear the radio to be honest it's quarter to seven it's been a long day but it's been a productive day so it pays off we'll be back in tomorrow morning to brew another beer and as it stands now Abby's come to fetch dad and we're off Got to go and go out, carve some pumpkins. Yeah. Okay. Right then, let's go. Lead the way, madam. Mm -hmm. See you on the next one, folks. Cheers. Hey, Abby, guess what? Lights out. <gasps> Night vision.